So in our previous video, we looked at ideas around luminosity and radiant flux intensity. So a quick recap here, luminosity is another name for power and specifically it is power of the electromagnetic radiation from the sun. Power is energy over time. So we are looking at ways to measure the intensity and the power of stars at where we are standing okay so currently if let's say i'm going to observe a star in the sky i need to know how much electromagnetic radiation how much power and intensity is arriving at me and why is power not enough and why do we need intensity okay so remember that uh like all waves it travels out in three direction okay so it's a bit like you can think of the star as the origin or the point source where the light wave or the electromagnetic wave travels out so it looks like many many circles contain in each other okay so if i want to look up for intensity which is radiant flux intensity i will take power per unit area or in this case it would be luminosity per unit area okay and this area here will be the area of a sphere which means if I'm going to try to measure the intensity of the star, okay, so let me try to draw the axis. Okay, this is a graph or axis of intensity, but we are doing astro, right? So this is radiant flux intensity F against distance D. Okay, so because the distance between the star, which is here, and the observer, I don't know la, whether the observer is here or the observer is here or the observer is here. Okay, it follows the inverse square law. Okay, these are all area of spheres. Okay, so surface area is 4 pi d squared. And if I join them together, I sort of like get this relationship now, something like this. Okay, it follows the inverse. Okay, let me try my best. Inverse square relationship. Okay, so based on um, a bit based on where what we are measuring or where we are at okay so when we think about this right let's say for example you are looking at a star and you measure the value of f and then you find that okay this is the value of f that is measured if we know the luminosity let's say for example if we know l we can actually substitute to find what d is okay because at the end of the day f is inversely proportional to distance squared okay the radiant flux intensity is inversely proportional to distance squared okay so this is why we care about this and we can actually measure the distance of different different bright objects that we see in the night sky so to measure distances of galaxies or any star for that matter the radiant flux intensity on earth is measured okay so don't forget this one is a stand-in for intensity just going to put this intensity in inverted comma because it is actually radiant so bright radiant means shining okay so radiant flux intensity okay and it would be luminosity per unit area okay so another just a reminder here this luminosity is a stand in for power okay the electromagnetic radiation energy per unit time okay these are things that you already know okay so if we have f we have l we definitely can calculate the distance between the galaxies and the observer okay because this area can then be written as 4 pi d squared all right we'll try an example first a quick one before we do an actual example. This is an AS question from May June 12, paper 1 1. So, just to show you the inverse square law and how we've been using it all this while. So, here there is a light meter, <laughs> light meter, very nice, measuring the intensity. Ah, so now we level up really. We don't, for if let's say I replace this with a star, how do I even draw a star? I do. I replace this with a star, so flaming. Hang on. Let me replace this with a star okay a star so right now the intensity becomes your radian flux intensity fancy name f okay so theory suggests 
as we've mentioned before that this radiant flux intensity or in or intensity varies inversely as the square of the distance so at the end of the day we are using f inversely proportional to d square or i inversely proportional to d square where d is the distance between the star the star the light source to the light meter which also behaves as the observer okay so which results supports the theory so now I, I need you to be very careful when it comes to this kind of curve a and b is wrong you may be thinking miss i thought inverse square law must decrease with distance you are right but it intersects with all these axes so if i is inversely proportional to d square okay the vertical and horizontal axis are asymptotes okay we move this a bit vertical and horizontal axis are asymptotes meaning you cannot touch no touching no touch no no <laughs> okay and the reason why we cannot touch is number one your 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 intensity will never drop to true zero because you need to be infinitely far away and where is infinitely far away besides my hopes and dreams okay what is infinitely far don't know okay and your intent your distance cannot be zero because d equal to zero is where inside the star nani the observer is inside the star mm, the observer is no longer here with us <laughs> okay so there's no inside the star to speak of in fact a lot of times we measure so far away that the data that we get for stars is like this part only <laughs> Rip. okay inside the star cannot and then here is like what uh d is so far infinite distance what means okay so a and b is out so now we need to look at the linear graph of course because it is d square so i inversely proportional to one over d square can be replaced with the equation i is equal to k over d square so based on all your paper five your paper four your big brain math skill you should be able to tell the answer is d la, all right because you know the gradient is equal to k all right so quick and fast one just so you know the inverse square graph okay cannot touch the axis it will look like a or b as long as it doesn't touch the axis it is like this then it's okay really okay the blue one is okay all right let's look at an example okay a quick plug to the books that i'm taking the example from a lot of it is from this book collins okay if you can find it in your library that'll be great they have quite a lot of astrophysics question for you to try not hashtag not sponsored okay let's jump into an example the star proxima century has a known luminosity of 2.8 times 10 to the power of 23 watt astronomers measure the radiant flux intensity on earth as 1.09 times 10 to the power of negative 11 watt per meter squared so meaning by the time it reaches earth a lot of that intensity has dropped to 10 to the power of negative 11 watt for every meter square how far this calculate how far the star is away from us okay this one should be a period la, full stop okay so this is l and this is f so recall that radiant flux intensity f is equal to l over area intensity sorry power per unit area okay and right now the area that we are using is the area of a sphere 4 pi d square hmm then we can substitute well. okay so the radiant flux intensity given is i guess what i'll normally do in the exam is i will swap this swap swap because i don't want to calculate wrong stuff okay so l over 4 pi f so from here i'll get d square is equal to luminosity 2.8 times 10 to the power of 23 divided by 4 pi 1.09 times 10 to the power of negative 11 okay so just by pressing my good friend Casio the calculator carefully okay i will be able to get d is equal to 4.52 times 10 to the power of 16 meter very far away very far okay so 
to give you context, okay, distance between the earth and our good old sun, Sol, is equal to 1.5 times 10 to the power of 9 meter. So this star, Proxima Centauri, hey, maybe I can show you where it is. So as you can see, this is once again my South Pole. So if you install this Star Walker tool, you can actually search up different different stars. So I have Proxima Centauri, which is just slightly beneath the South Pole, tuck, tuck in the middle of the Milky Way like all of us. We are in the Milky Way galaxy. So I'm going to zoom in a bit just to show you roughly where it is. Okay. And this Proxima Centauri is our closest star, proximate star. Okay, Proxima Centauri. And, you know, we have a lot of information and measurement about it. For example, we actually know its uh, orientation. As you can see, the numbers keep shifting because, hey, guess what? Earth is moving. So it's a lot of stuff that's moving around. But you can look at the visual magnitude. Okay, this value, visual magnitude. Okay, 11.01. .01. So the larger this number, the harder it is for us to see in the naked with our naked eyes. So a lot of this data is taken by very sensitive telescope. And number two, the distance here is four light years. So the light that we measure coming from the star, Proxima Centauri, is actually from four years ago. It took the light four years to arrive at Earth. Wow, so far, yes. What is a light year and how do we calculate? That will be in the next video. But I also want, to, want you to understand that it also means if something happened to Proxima Centauri, we will only know four years after that. Because, well, for four years, the star doesn't exist. The, the light will still travel to us. Okay, so this is our star. And then if we zoom back out, it's really, you guys, it's really just a tiny dot in our great big universe. All right, that's it for this example. See you to the next one.